Hi and welcome to State of Mind. Um, in today's episode, I'd like to talk about the cause, the causes of depression. You know, when, whenever we uh, see a person who's suffering from depression, it's very common for that person or uh, family members to ask, why am I depressed? Why is this person depressed? If you look at the newspapers and they report suicide, you'll often see the reporters say things like the cause for suicide was X, Y, and Z event, attributing it to a failure in exam or maybe somebody scolding this person or whatever it might be. So there's an idea that depression has a cause or suicide has a cause and that if we can figure out that cause, we can help this person get over depression. This idea can be expressed in other ways. A person may say, you have no reason, no cause to be depressed. You have everything in your life. Why are you depressed? Again, the belief here is that there has to be an understandable cause, i.e. a life event, something that happened to this person to cause depression. That is actually an incorrect way of thinking because depression is far more complex than that. Now, if you're talking about sadness, you can think in those terms. You can say, why are you sad? You know, are you sad today because something happened to you? What happened to you? But remember, depression, while sadness is a, a very common symptom of depression, of clinical depression, depression is not the same as sadness. The sadness in depression, by the time, uh, uh, you know, when a person is experiencing suffering from clinical depression, there are changes and alterations in their brain, in the functioning of their brain, the body, the metabolism, uh, of course, the mind. So it's a condition, a state of dis-ease and therefore a disease that has multiple factors, just like a disease like diabetes or high blood pressure or, or you know, any physical, um, so-called physical condition. Because even that's an artificial, um, uh, you know, separation. Uh, depression is not a mental illness. Diabetes is not a physical illness. Both diabetes and depression are mind-body illnesses. Um, and I'll just, let me just emphasize that, by the way. So depression uh, affects the body as much, if not more, than the mind. Some of the key symptoms in depression are changes in sleep, changes in appetite. Often, especially in India and in um, Asian countries, people suffering from depression may not even feel sad. They may just feel a sense of physical heaviness, a sense of fatigue, sometimes body aches and pains, headaches, um, uh, chest pain, abdominal pain, um, pain anywhere in the body. So the only reason we call it a mental condition is because we are looking primarily at the, uh, uh, the mental psychological aspects. We forget that there's a, there's a huge aspect of the body and that it is a complex condition just like any other physical condition like diabetes. So what are the causes of depression? Now here it does get a little, um, you know, uh, 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 what shall I say? It, it gets a little confusing because most episodes of clinical depression are precipitated by a life event. So for example, events that could cause sadness in some people can cause clinical depression. Right, So the, the inciting event is something that happens in your life and that stress can initiate a whole chain reaction within the brain, the mind and the body that we then call, uh, call clinical depression. Just as not everybody who smokes gets bronchitis or, or, or um, pneumonia or cancer, not everybody who goes through severe stress is going to get clinical depression, but a significant uh, percentage of people will get clinical depression. And almost all cases of clinical depression, I would say as many as 75 to 80% of cases, the first episode, the first time the person experienced clinical depression was usually after a life event. So you might say, well, then the cause of depression is stress. And certainly stress is a key uh, element of depression, meaning that if we can learn how to avoid psychological stress, then we can reduce the prevalence of depression in this country and each one of us can reduce our risk of depression. There's no doubt about that. But, um, but there are also genetic factors. So we know there are at least 40, 50, maybe many more genes that are involved in depression. And it's not like if you have the gene for depression, that firstly, it's not like there's one single gene for depression. 
Uh, and it's not like if you have the genetics, you will definitely get depression. It does mean that if you have a certain kind of gene, it increases your risk for depression. So one of the many genes that have been implicated in the causation of depression is uh, what we call the serotonin transporter gene. And this gene, when you look at it under the microscope, the electron microscope, it has, like all, all genes, it has a, um, uh, you know, you'll see arms of the chromosome. And there are two variants, one with the long arm and one with the short uh, arm. And these are just variants of the serotonin transporter gene. Now, when people have the short arm of this gene, that version of the gene, they are much more likely to suffer from depression, clinical depression after a stressful life event than a person who, who has the long arm of the gene, right? So in other words, uh, stress will not cause clinical depression in everybody. It's more likely to cause depression in those who have this gene. And a very good study shows that 40% of us in India have this gene that makes us vulnerable to depression when we go through stress. So that's, that's quite a significant statistic, which means that 40% of India is vulnerable to depression if they go through stress. And when you think about the way our society is changing, the kind of life we're leading, well, stress is almost universal. So which makes 40% of, of Indians vulnerable or likely to suffer from depression um, in their lifetime, which is uh, very, very significant. Now, there are other causes that are risk factors that increase the, the, the chances for suffering from depression. And um, they're both environmental, lifestyle, as well as social factors. Any time that there's a change in your life, any significant change in your life, that is, that is a stressful event. And every time there's stress, if you have the vulnerability for it, it does increase the risk for depression. So, uh, so that's point one, number one, the most important, I think, to cause, which is stress. But of course, when I say stress, it's a very global term and we have to break it down and really figure out why is there stress and what is stress for each one of us and what can we do within our minds and our brains to reduce the amount of stress despite the situation we are in. There are other factors, significant factors for the increase in depression in today's society, and they include altered nutrition. So we know now in the last many years, there's been amazing research about the gut. And we know now that the gut is a potent source of neurotransmitters, that most of our neurotransmitters in the brain are actually synthesized in the gut in a way, meaning the cofactors responsible for the creation of these neurotransmitters are synthesized in the gut and therefore what you eat and the state of your of your gut your intestines has a very important uh, is a is a very important factor in both mental and physical health now, there is something called the microbiome which is the kind of bacteria in the gut and you might know this that we all have you know uh, millions of bacteria in our gut and these bacteria, we have a symbiotic relationship with them. You might not know you have a relationship with these bacteria, but you do. And the, the, the symbiosis means you help each other. And so the bacteria, they get uh, nutrients in your, in your, from your, the food that you're eating. And in turn, they help us synthesize, digest, and actually create, including synthesizing neurotransmitters. Now, depending on the kind of food you eat, you're going to grow different kinds of bugs in your gut, different kinds of bacteria. And we know now from research that if you eat wholesome food, that is lots of grains, vegetables, not much sugar, no processed food, no fried food, basically all the good stuff that your grandma told you to eat, you're more likely to grow good bacteria in your gut. And by good bacteria, I mean bacteria that will help you synthesize neurotransmitters responsible for having a good mood. So nutrition is a huge factor. And in order to reduce your risk for depression, you have to eat a healthy, balanced diet and avoid all the um, temptations of fast food and processed food and sweets. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Either you enjoy your dessert or you enjoy a healthy and happy mood. Um, other factors include social contact. So the less social contact you have, uh, the more lonely you are, the less meaningful relationships you're in, the more likely that uh, the more uh, the riskier it is, the increased uh, you have an increased risk for suffering from depression. So social contact is really important. Now, 
Another factor that unfortunately we have very little control over is urbanization. So there is also lots of data which proves that inhaling pollutants like uh, sulfur dioxide and uh, nitrogen dioxide and all the other pollutants that come from combustion engines, cars, in significant, significantly increases the risk for mental disorders such as ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, anxiety disorders, depression, and so on. The fumes that we are inhaling are affecting neurotransmitters in the brain and affecting our moods. And unfortunately, that's something that can be quite hard to avoid uh, depending on where you're living. Now, urbanization also means that you have less contact with nature. And there's a lot of data now that says that if if you're in nature and you're looking out uh, at greenery, uh, right now I'm, I'm in an apartment and I'm looking out and I fortunately see a couple of trees out in the distance, but then I still mainly see concrete. And for many of us, this is the vista we look out at, right? You don't see greenery. You don't see an open vista that you can look out at. You might think it's good to have, but I don't need it. But research tells us that not having exposure to nature, when your eyes can't see greenery, when your, your, your lungs can't breathe in fresh air, when your skin can't absorb nice sunlight, all of this increases, significantly increases the risk for depression. The last point about sunlight, of course, um, that's a separate risk factor in that not being out in sunlight reduces vitamin D in our bodies and, and vitamin D deficiency can increase the risk for depression. So as you can see, there's so many risk factors. It's not one event. That event, that stressful event will interact with multiple risk factors, including our interpretation of, our, of that event, the genetics, our metabolism, the, the bacteria in our gut, our relationships, and all of those things. And when they all interact together, in some, sometimes they can cause, they can lead to clinical depression. So when we say, what is the cause for depression? Why are you sad? To someone who's depressed, we must remember that it's like asking someone who's suffering from diabetes, why do you have high blood, blood sugar? It's not one factor, it is many factors. And um, therefore, we must understand that depression in that sense is not a choice. Um, it's not a luxury. It's not a, just a psychological state that a person believes themselves to be in. It is real. And when we understand the many factors, in each individual case, we can actually start doing something about treating depression, helping them recover. I hope you um, enjoyed this discussion about uh, depression because it's important for all of us to really understand this condition. As I keep saying, it has become so common that every one of us really, really, really needs to understand this. Uh, do let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear from you. Comment, um, share your comments, your thoughts, any suggestions for the podcast. would love to hear from you. And I look forward to seeing you back on the next State of Mind.